One of the most important decisions you'll make as an investor is how much money to put into each different asset class. It's called your asset allocation. So how much do you put into shares, how much into bonds, how much into commodity, and how much into real estate. Now there are some stock portfolios which you can simply copy, and the most famous one of those is probably the All Weather Portfolio or All Seasons Portfolio created by Ray Dalio. Now to create that portfolio in the UK is slightly different than it would be for US investors. And to look at that and also how well it's performed over the long term, let's see that in a bit more detail. This is not a recommendation. If you want advice tailored to your specific circumstances, seek independent financial advice. First, let's see what we mean by all weather. This portfolio was the brainchild of Ray Dalio, who's a very famous and very successful hedge fund manager. And the portfolio was popularised by Tony Robbins, the self-help expert. Now, Ray Dalio's produced this video called How the Economic Machine Works. And it's half an hour of your life that would be very well spent if you watch the video. It explains how US credit cycles drive the economy there and also in markets globally. It's beautifully explained and beautifully illustrated. And it's here on YouTube. Tony Robbins has written a string of books. And Unshakable was one that was read by many of my clients who told me about it. So I bought it and read it. And I must say, I really liked it. These are the contents all very clearly explained without any jargon. And he makes a lot of the same points that I do. During market crashes, you should buy, not sell, because that's a bargain. A combination of saving as much as you can and compounding and lots of time can lead to very good returns over the long term. Try to avoid paying too much in fees. And diversify across different asset types and across different countries. Tony Robbins has a huge global audience. So he took what was a fairly theoretical concept from Ray Dalio and made it available to the common man, explained in very simple terms in his books. The central concept of all weather is as follows. We can either have growth speeding up or slowing down. And the same is true of price rises. They can either be speeding up or slowing down. Another name for growth is GDP, gross domestic product, and another name for price rises is inflation. And this automatically splits the state of the world into four possible states. When times are good, you get an inflationary boom, and that's when growth speeds up and price rises increase as well. And in that kind of environment, assets like stocks perform particularly well, as long as inflation isn't too high. If growth is speeding up but prices are slowing down, that's called a disinflationary boom. And again, stocks do fairly well in this kind of environment. When growth slows down and prices fall, that's called a deflationary bust. And that's a really toxic environment for equity. In that kind of environment, long-term bonds and assets such as gold tend to hold their value better. And stocks will typically fall in value. And when growth is slowing down, but prices are increasing, that's also bad for stocks. But it can also be bad for long-term bonds. So it might be better to switch into intermediate bonds with a shorter maturity and a shorter duration. And that environment might also favour commodities. So there's no asset that works in all environments. So the all-weather strategy tries to find assets that do well in at least one of the four states. The actual mixture of assets is as follows. You have 30% in stocks, a very large allocation to long-term government bonds, that's 40%, only 15% in intermediate-term government bonds, and 7.5% each in gold and commodities. You may be shocked by how small the allocation to equity is, but bear in mind that the volatility or the risk of equity is usually about twice that of government bonds. Here I've shown the volatility over time for the UK FTSE 100 and for a UK government bond fund. And you can see it's roughly two to one. And that means if you have a portfolio that's 50-50 equity and government bonds, it turns out that most of the risk will come from the equity. So the idea is that you have roughly equal risk contributions from each of your asset classes. And that means including much less equity in the portfolio. Now, both Dalio and Robbins are from the US. If you want to replicate something like the all-weather portfolio in the UK, how would we do it? What I'm going to do is talk about each of the different allocations and which funds allow you to get exposure to those at a very low cost. Starting off with regional stocks, we probably want something like the FTSE 100. 
Fortunately, you can buy exposure to the FTSE 100 very cheaply for just 0.07% per year. Strictly speaking, Dalio says you should get exposure to your domestic market, and in the UK that means the FTSE All Share. Here again, you can track the index very cheaply at just 0.06% per year. Dalio makes a distinction between intermediate government bonds, which are usually about 10 years to 15 years in maturity, and long-term government bonds, which are more than 15 years. So what I've done here with the intermediate bonds is to go for funds that track the entire UK gilt market, because that gives you a duration of about 10 years, which is what you would get with an intermediate bond fund. And here too, you can buy very cheap trackers, which will cost you just around 0.06 or 0.07% per year. For long-term government bonds, the cost is a little bit higher, about 0.15% per year, and the choice is more limited. Now for US investors, if you buy gold, commodities are priced in US dollars, so they're not taking a currency risk, which we are taking in the UK, because we have to think in sterling terms. So not only are we taking the gold price risk, we're also taking the currency risk between dollars and sterling. And these funds tend to also be quite expensive at 0.25% per year or more. If you are worried about the currency risk, you can always get a hedged physical gold fund, like the one offered by ETFs, but that is fairly expensive at 0.39% per year. General commodity funds are also quite expensive. The cheapest I could find was 0.19% per year. And again, if you're worried about the currency risk, you can always get the hedged version, such as the one offered by UBS, for 0.34% per year. One of the most attractive things about creating your own all-weather portfolio in the UK is that the cost is very low. If I take the weighted average of the charges, the combined fee comes out at just 9 basis points. That's 0.09% per year. But of course, you're going to have to rebalance this portfolio yourself. You don't have to do that particularly often, maybe just once a year, but it is a pain. Now let's think about the risks and rewards of a UK all-weather fund. Now I've chosen some of the series which have the longest histories in order to generate this time series. This isn't necessarily the only implementation of all weather for the UK version, but it'll give you a rough idea of what to expect. Here are the returns you'd get if you'd invested £100 around 2011. It would currently be worth about £160. If we were to compare this with the Vanguard Life Strategy 20% fund, which is only 20% equity and 80% bonds, the return is a little bit better. But if we compare it with Life Strategy 40%, which is 40% equity, then the return isn't quite as good. And as we go to 60%, 80%, and 100% Life Strategy, you can see that the All Weather Fund is lagging quite a long way below those other funds. And the numbers I've shown on the right are the annualised returns. That's 6.1% per year for all weather versus between 5.7 and 9.6% for the life strategy funds. If we plot that on a risk return plot where we have risk on the x axis and return on the y axis, you can see that UK all weather just hasn't done very well for the level of risk it takes. Its risk is about 6.8%, which is its volatility, and its return over this period was 59%. But the life strategy fund with the closest risk level is life strategy 60%, where the return was much higher at 80%. And even the lower risk life strategy 40% fund, where the risk was only 5.1%, gave you a higher return at 67%. Another way of thinking about that is we could read up on the risk scale to where we'd be on the life strategy continuum. And for that level of risk, if we combined life strategy funds, we could get a return of 76% rather than 59%. So all in all, not a great risk-adjusted return over this period since 2011. But of course, this is an all-weather fund. And the period we've looked at since 2011 has been a particularly rosy one. This graph shows US gross domestic product, or growth, since 1950, and the grey bars show you the US recessions. To really test this portfolio, you'd have to go through several of these growth and contraction cycles. In other words, the bad weather as well as the good weather. And the more cycles we look at, the better an idea we get of how well all weather performs through a wider range of economic conditions. There's an excellent site called PortfolioCharts.com where you can track the performance since 1970. And that gives an average return once you take away inflation of about 5.3%, with a risk of about 
and it finds that all seasons lost money about a third of the time. But if we compare that with a classic portfolio consisting of 60% equity and 40% bonds, the return would actually have been better than all weather since 1970 in the UK. We'd have received 5.8% average return rather than 5.3% with all weather, although the risk would have been slightly higher at 14.2% rather than 9.6%. And we'd have lost money slightly more often, but still about a third of the time. So the performance of all weather over the last 50 years or so hasn't been stellar here in the UK. You'd have been better off with something a bit simpler, like a 60-40 equity bond portfolio. And as we've seen, life strategy is also very competitive. Now, if you found that video useful, and I hope you did, many of you tell us that you do, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. I rely completely on you to support me, so <laughs> it would be great if you signed up. For just $5 a month, that's really not very much, you get to join our Slack channel and you can talk to me anytime, and you also get to join our live Q&A sessions on a Sunday evening. It's very friendly, very informal, and you can ask any question you like. And if you go to the $15 a month level, you get a one-to-one -one with me every other month. So, as always, thank you for listening.